Medical researchers say they have discovered the gene which is responsible for cystic fibrosis, the most common inherited fatal disease in this country. We're going to cure this disease. A lot of people expected the cure to arrive any day. It didn't. A protein starts out as a long chain of different chemicals, amino acids, but unlike genes, proteins won't work in a straight line. Here's part of a protein Think of them as tangles of ribbon. They come in any number of different shapes. They can look like this, or like this, or this. The varieties are endless. But when it's created, every protein is told, here is your shape. And that shape defines what it does, tells all the other proteins what it does, and that's how they recognize each other when they hook up and do business. In the protein world, your shape is your destiny. Slightest little changes in shape and boom, the consequences are huge. Because it is now misshapen and a key protein that's found in lung cells, in fact in many cells, can't do its job. So let's take a look at some real lung cells we'll travel in. This is the lining or the membrane of a lung cell and here's how the protein is supposed to work. The top of your screen is the outside of a cell, the bottom of the screen, the inside of the cell, of course, and our healthy protein is providing a kind of chute so that salt can enter and leave the cell. Those little green bubbles, that's salt. And as you see here, the salt is getting through. But if the protein is not the right shape, then it's not allowed into the membrane. It can't do its job. And without that protein, as you see here, salt gets trapped inside the cell and that triggers a whole chain of reactions that makes the cell surface sticky and covered with thick mucus. Because if you could just get them shaped right, the proteins should become instantly recognizable to other proteins and get back to business. But look at these things. How would we ever learn to properly fold wildly multidimensional proteins? It may be doable, but it won't be easy. Okay, so it's not just the number of genes, it's all the different proteins they can make and then the way those proteins interact. And to figure out all those interactions and how they affect health and disease, that's gonna keep scientists very busy for the next few decades.